we will learn about the hip bone hip bone is a large irregular bone and it is made up of the three parts we have the ilium and the ischium and the pubis and all these three parts are connected by the acetabulum so this part is known as the acetabulum and how they are connected they are connected by a y shaped cartilage the pubis and the ischium they are separated from each other by a oval shaped opening that is known as the obturator foramen now we will see the ilium in detail the upper end of the ilium is known as the iliac crest it is convex upward at the anterior end of the iliac crest there is a small bony projection that is known as the anterior superior iliac spine similarly on the posterior end we have the small bony projection that is known as the posterior superior iliac spine if you go 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine there is a tubercle and that is known as the tubercle of the iliac crest anterior border is extending from the anterior superior iliac spine running downward up to the acetabulum at the middle of the anterior border you will find out this projection and this is known as the anterior inferior iliac spine now the posterior border extending from the posterior superior iliac spine running downward and ending at the upper part of the ischium when you will trace the posterior border you will find out this bony projection few cm inferior to the posterior superior iliac spine and this is known as the posterior inferior iliac spine just below that you will see a large depression that is known as the greater sciatic notch then you will find out this spine is known as the ischial spine and below the ischial spine there is a small depression that is known as the lesser sciatic notch on the pelvic surface and it will extend from the iliac crest and running downwards and go till the iliopubic eminence and it separates the iliac fossa from the sacro pelvic surface now we will identify the surfaces okay so this is the gluteal surface the outer surface of the ilium is known as the gluteal surface in this surface you will observe the gluteal lines so first of all the posterior gluteal line it is the shortest one and it is starting from the 5 cm in front of the posterior superior iliac spine and runs downward to the end at the upper part of the greater sciatic notch this is the posterior gluteal line then we have the anterior gluteal line starting from the 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine running backward and downward and ending at the upper border of the greater sciatic notch then we have the anterior inferior iliac spine it will start from the few cm above the anterior inferior iliac spines then running backward and ending at the apex of the greater sciatic notch now we have the iliac fossa it is a large concave depression on the inner surface of the ilium it is bounded above by the iliac crest behind by the medial border in front by the anterior border the area behind the medial border we call it as sacro pelvic surface sacro pelvic surface subdivided into three parts first part is the iliac tuberosity this is the upper large and rough part of the ilium second part is known as the auricular surface it lies below the iliac tuberosity it will articulate with the sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint 
then we have the pelvic surface lies below the auricular surface next bone we have the pubis pubis will form the anterior inferior part of the hip bone and also it form the anterior one fifth of the acetabulum this portion anterior one fifth parts of the pubis so it has the body it has the superior ramus it has the inferior ramus the superior border of the pubis is called the pubic crest then we have the small bony projection that is known as the pubic tubercle then you have the three surfaces this is the anterior surface posterior side we have the posterior surface and this medial side we have the medial surface medial surface will unite with the other side of the uh, hip bone at the pubic symphysis so it is also known as the symphysial surface then we have the superior ramus if you see this portion is known as the superior ramus so superior ramus is extending from the body of the pubis to the acetabulum it has three borders and three surfaces so the superior border is also known as the pectineal line which is extending from the pubic tubercle running posteriorly till the iliopubic eminence anterior border is also known as the obturator crest which will extend from the iliac tubercle till the acetabular notch inferior border is sharp and forming the upper margin of the obturator foramen pectineal surface is a triangular area lies between the anterior and the superior border so this triangular area is known as the pectineal surface pelvic surface lies between the superior and the inferior border obturator surface lies between the anterior and the inferior border it lies behind that inferior ramus extending from the body of the pubis to the ramus of the ischium after joining with the ramus of the ischium together we call it as ischio pubic ramus now we have the last bone that is known as the ischium ischium lies posterior inferior part of the hip bone and also it will form the two fifth of the acetabulum if you see this part is the two fifth of the acetabulum it is also forming the posterior boundary of the obturator foramen ischium has two ends this is known as the upper end and this is the lower end so upper end will form the two fifth of the acetabulum and lower end will form the ischial tuberosity along with the ramus of the ischium it has the anterior border which is forming the posterior boundary of the obturator foramen then we have this is the posterior border posterior border if you will trace above it will continue as the posterior border of the ilium and below it will end at the upper margin of the ischial tuberosity in the upper part you will see a small projection that is known as the ischial spine and just below the spine you will see this depression is the lesser sciatic notch now the lateral border is forming the lateral margin of the ischial tuberosity surfaces femoral surface lies between the anterior and the lateral border dorsal surface which lies posteriorly pelvic surface is smooth ischial tuberosity it is divided into upper and the lower part by a transverse ridge and the upper area again if you see this is the upper area it is subdivided by a oblique ridge 
so it will divide into the superior lateral part and inferior medial part this is the lower area it is again divided by a longitudinal ridge into the outer part and the inner part then we have the conjoint ischiopubic ramus it has the upper border it has the lower border it has the outer surface and inner surface 